Hello moped lovers, Mark Savage here. Done a video of these little things before, but this is the direct bike, same as the Barration, same as those Pulse Scout. Little bikes, what's wrong with this one? It is sat in the shed for 18 months, it won't start. The guy oddly was told that the petrol tank here allows water to get into the carburetor. Really? So, if it rains, water gets in the petrol tank. From this sealed unit, water gets in under... What? Well, you do hear something new every time. I had to politely say that that doesn't actually happen. And more likely, that because the bike hasn't been started... I should have stopped that, shouldn't I? More likely because the bike hasn't been started in 18 months. It's got stout fuel on it. Battery was dead. You know what I say about the battery? Underneath this little plastic cover, underneath this little bit here. Battery, while I'm chatting, let's stick it on charge and then use a jump pack to turn it over. However, we're gonna have a look around the bike in here. I've done a video of one of these, as I said already. If you remember, it starts off me sitting in here and I just say these are 650 pounds new. And by the time you import taxes and dealer taxes and all that lot going, you're getting a cheap little bike. They're 30 mile an hour bikes. Now that other one I had actually did a bit more, about 38 mile an hour, I was quite surprised. He said his dealers took this one, he took the washer out, he's watched some bloke on a video doing washers. I wonder who that would have been. Take the washer out of the very other. Look, it doesn't always work. And this is a 4T, remember, not 2T. But before I get starting, remember one thing about these bikes. Check the oil regularly. <laughs> It's in here, check it regularly, otherwise the engine will seize. So it's battery off, charge that, what's next? It'll be 10 mil, 10 mil, let's get this bucket out, get to the carburetor, drain all of the fuel. In here is also, I don't even see it, there's a fuel, there's a fuel filter here, clean the air filter. Let's get the plug sorted, drain the fuel out of here. Let's get some nice, yummy, fresh fuel in here. Clean plug, clean air filter, clean the carburetor, nice charge battery. More than likely, I'm going to have to buy another bloody battery. Um, more than likely, but let's get it done. We're going to do all that with you now. And uh, let's get on with it, as I say. I'm missing a cup of tea, though. Let's look, nice and easy, seat out, five 10 mil bolts. One, two, three. Four, five. There you go, look. Plug, carb. There's a fuel filter I tried to show you earlier. So off, suck out all the old fuel, drain it all out either way. Um, put a little pipe here and suck it out. Let it drain out that way. Clean some carburetor. Look, that shouldn't be loose like that. Can you see that? I mean, that will mess around with your idling. So I've already said it before, you must go round these with WD, GT85, cheap Poundland, it doesn't matter. Some guy contacted me and said that you need to get glycerine, 10%, um, white spirits, vegetable oil, it's a pound. Just spray everywhere, okay, it stops it rusting. I don't care pay a pound or five pound for your great stuff, doesn't matter. You could even go really, really high tech, Oh yes, 30 pound for one litre. It's not going in this bike. This is my big bikes in the winter. But this is the nut stuff, this is. People rave on about it, rave on about it, and rave on about it. So I've decided to pay 30 pounds and get some of this ACF50. There's another one out there as well, I think. Anyway, not going on this one. I'm gonna spray it and clean it up and get on with it. My usual bit of using a bit of pipe. Cypher that too, well. A little bit murky. Then I got to this one where I'm sucking a bit lower. Don't drink it. it really tastes horrible. Imagine about a cup of tea. Doesn't quite take the petrol taste away, but it's still not a cup of tea. Thanks, wife. Ugh. Anyway, can you see 
bits. Yeah. You can clearly see that, can't you? That's not good. Not good at all. So, oh, that's unusual. A metal tank. <laughs> <laughs> we are talking a complete cheap plastic bike. A metal petrol tank. Anyway, fun over. Panels off. Get this tank out upside down. You can't. You cannot just drain this petrol out of this one. There's a filter inside. Well, it looks like it'll stick. Really, I'll show you um, the vacuum. Um, so change the inline filter, change the vacuum, or clean the vacuum. Should get away with just petrolising that. Uh, clean petrol. Um, tank out upside down. Flush the whole thing out with fresh petrol. Okay. Um, get all the bits out. Because if you don't flush it out properly upside down and get it clean. Little bits will go back in there again, and you're just gonna have the same problem again. And it's gonna be a carb clean as well. So let's get on with it. Battery's on charge, and uh, it was six volts, so it's holding something. I'm gonna have to uh, leave it on charge f actually for a day, probably. Well, mustn't do that, it'll blow up. I'm not sure if it's got an auto to stop on this one. If it's a really good charge, six amp battery, if not, it's gonna have to be another one. And to be honest with you, I think I'm gonna to have to buy another battery. Okay, annoyingly, there's a lot of bolts just to get this petrol tank out. This many bolts, this frame, and that frame, and all them screws, and bolts, and the plastic bits. Really didn't want this to come out. But remember these pipes. This one's lucky you got a fuel filter, but fuel goes in there, and the air goes in there. I often get people say to me, I took it apart and now I can't remember where they go back. Take pictures, I can't stress enough, take pictures. Then you're not gonna get caught in this bit where you have no idea what you've done. Same with the bolts, if you don't know, put them in sections. I've seen people cut cardboard before, long, short bolts and so on. Okay, there really is a lot to keep the frame in to move this back. And if you look how I've done it, I've only done a couple of there, and I've undone these ones and moved it over to get them out of these bits. Lots of bits of work just to get this stinky thing up. This is the sender, okay? You should be able to just twist that out and that tells you how much fuel you've got. I'm not going to pair of pliers with that. Two hands needed. There we go. most world annoying fucking fuel sender what we've come to see now vacuum we're going to take that off and clean it up but let's see what comes look how hot it is today <laughs> that is not good not good at all some of the slightly cleaner fuel that we put in the other day pour that back in there Give it a swirl around. We need to get everything out of here. Let me get on with this. I'm gonna take this out, clean that as well. There'll be a little filter in there. Um, it should have stopped all the crap going into the carburetor, if I'm honest with you. Looks clean in there. Take it off and have a look. Nice and clean, pop fresh fuel in it. Let's see if it works. We now have a very clean petrol tank, not that you can see inside there, very clean. And we have some very crap much in there. I think that leaf was in there as well. So, petrol tank back on. The filter was actually inside there. Can't get it out, um, so I've cleaned it all up. I've blown this all through, blown that all through. <sighs> Could take that off, but it didn't look very dirt, oh no. Nice crap as well, new fuel line in there. Knowing that's lovely and clean, pop it all on. We are 100% not doing it on the hottest day, 33 degrees in this shed. Well, anyway, tank back on, not all the covers. Carburetor, just undo these two screws here, turn upside down, main jet, idle jet, and so on. Sorry, idle jet, main jet. Give it a clean up, take them out, spray them up. Really worth doing. There's that much crap in the tank. It could have got through this little filter. It could have got in there. Anyway, there's bad fuel in there. Clean it out, let's get on with that. I keep saying it, but getting ahead of myself. Right, fuel's done, primed the carburetor. Remember how I said, suck this air pipe here until you hear the carburetor filled. So we've got petrol, carbs full. Look at this plug. Okay, we're just gonna clean that. We're gonna get a new one. 
but we're just going to clean this one to see if she starts and get it there. Air filter, I'm going to check that and make sure that's clean as well. I'm getting so hot. And then let's see if she starts then. What do we have? We have power by a battery pack. The battery's on charge. And that is holding voltage. Probably not a lot, but it is holding voltage. Hot. Whew. Anyway, uh, key on, clutch, clutch. <laughs> Breaking. Oh, yes. Oh, there you go. So this should be now a simple adjustment of the idles with this one here. Let's give it a couple of turns. In, on. Light works. Good for the MOT. Horn don't work. Oh, yes it does. Remember, it's always going to need adjustment. Choke first coming on, choke back on again. Expect to have to adjust it a few times. Anyway, indicators. No. investigation then no indicators anyway there you go nice and simple from non-running to running indicators are sort out do I call this a bonus section or the stuff that I have to do that you ask me so simply my indicator didn't work so been sat a long time it's got 2,800 kilometers 2,000 miles it's gone nowhere in five years except sit in the sun. Hence, there's a sort of odd colouring little bit. It's still so hot. So what I do, you hunt around for all the screws. Don't just go yanking them off. Get this screw, this front bit off here. There's one there, one there, and right in here. Lifts off. To get this front off, by the way, this is the indicator relay. Nice and easy to spot, normally it's only got a couple of wires to it, it sits there. So I checked that, sprayed it, and this is what I say before, wires. Doesn't have to be WD-40, any maintenance spray. Sprayed that, still didn't work. Cheat by pushing it across and spraying in there, that didn't work. Screws, 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 every bloody wear screws. Front panel. Sort of wiggles off. Bloody annoying. Anyway, that's what colour's supposed to be. <laughs> Didn't do anything. So I took all these apart and I sprayed them up. And now, look at that. Uh, but that light has to work for the MOT. Ta da! And obviously the back works as well. An extra half an hour to get this done. Now put it back together again. I'm going to wash it. Then you get to look around the bike, everything's got to work. So the horn, indicators, lights, high beam, low beam, um, have to work for electrics. And then obviously you've got real world bearings and all the little bits and bobs, tires and brakes and so on. Um, and this will be an MOT for tomorrow. And some will be very happy riding this bright yellow bike. So there we have your little Boetian, Pulse, Scout, Direct Bikes, you name it, they're all very, very similar little 40 little bikes this will do would you believe just under 40 mile an hour all this cutting the pink wire business and moving the washes it's up to you but there you go very nice very little simple bike 10 inch wheels gallon in there just give it a service as well i say service just change the oil it's really not hard to do clean the plug i put no plug in it if it was really clean 2000 miles on the clock Nice and simple. And indicators now work. There we go. They are a little bit whitish. But, wait and see. Brake works, obviously. Ooh. Happy days. Windy now. There's 
been a hot one. But there you go, another little ped video. Like, share, subscribe, keep making them. Cheers, guys.